to Friends and Neighbors. I'm Sherry Tatum, your co-host for the day, along with my dear friend Ginger Sanders, Yay. who's stepping in for Sandra <laughs> O'Neill, and it's always a pleasure to have you, you, Ginger. It's so me. good to be here. I love you. I love, I love you dearly. You um, and you know, Ginger, a lot of times here on Friends and Neighbors, we have such tremendous testimonials. Oh, yes. You know, the stories of what people have gone through and the heartache, the hardship, that, that's what has happened to them and how through the help of the Lord, they're here well and okay and are able to write a book. Mm -hmm. And we have Chris Rice from Emmert mm -hmm. with us who, is right, who wrote Providing Promise, uh, Promise. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I've been looking through it. It's a, Na a Navy widow's journey to hope. You might need to get a Kleenex. <laughs> I don't know. I hear that a lot. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, get a cup of coffee, settle back, and just go with us, with Chris, to hear her amazing story of unspeakable tragedy, mm -hmm. uh, but discovering unshakable hope. Yeah. And who is that hope oh, in? through Chris? Jesus. Amen. 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 Oh, yeah. Amen. <laughs> I, I would love that. I know some of the story that the, our audience does it. I want you to tell of course. some of the story to start us off with. I would love to, thank you. You're so welcome. this story really occurred 30 years ago. Mm. And I was married to a Navy pilot and I was a stay at home mom. And we had two beautiful daughters. And my husband flew what's called the E2C Hawkeye, which is an aircraft that is based on aircraft carriers. So he was a lieutenant commander, officer in the Navy. We had a beautiful marriage, beautiful life. We lived in Chesapeake, Virginia. And what was happening during this time, this was in the early 90s, was a mission that was called Operation Provide Promise. Mm. And it was during the Bosnian relief mm -hmm. oh, yeah. effort. It was during the Bosnian conflict. And um, Operation Provide Promise was a mission where the Americans and the French and the Germans were taking food and medicine and doing humanitarian drops into the refugee camps of Bosnia. Yes, oh, okay. yes, I remember that. Yes, so it was in the early 90s. We were not at war. Mm -hmm. We were at peace. And my husband had left for a six-month deployment. So if any of your viewers are military or veterans, they understand that deployments normally occur anywhere from six months to nine months to a year. Well, John was going to be gone for about six months. On an aircraft carrier. On an aircraft carrier, wow. uh, yes, as he, he and his crew would fly right. the E-2 and help navigate these uh, refugee drops. And he had been gone for maybe two weeks. And I was at home with my baby. She was seven months old. Oh, And wow. then my three-year-old was at preschool. Oh. And I had naval officers come to my door. Oh. It was a Friday morning, mm. about 10 o'clock in the morning. And in my book, I called them the men in stripes because mm. I saw the stripes on their naval uniforms. Did you know immediately or? Um, my first thought was, what are naval officers doing coming to my door? on a Friday morning when John's at sea. And he would always tease me and say, I fly the safest aircraft in the Navy. Well, any aircraft that lands on and off aircraft carriers right. is not a safe airplane. Right. <laughs> you know, he, now, it wasn't an F-14 Tomcat um, that Tom Cruise flew in Top Gun. Yeah. You know, it was slow and it's a turboprop and your viewers obviously can look it up or if you get my book, I talk about it in there. But I saw those stripes and it was that instant that you just say, whoa, wait a minute. Mm. Naval officers are coming to my door. John's at sea. And by the time I got to the front door and I opened the door and there stood these grown men in their dress blues with tears streaming down their face. Mm. And they didn't have to say a word. Yeah. Mm. So um, what happened was the plane had crashed into the Ionian Sea, which is off the boot of Italy. Um, and that's where the carrier was mm -hmm. based that's right at that point. 
and the crew was lost at sea. Oh my word. Yeah. Th th they came back to land? They came in to land on the carrier. It was about one o'clock in the morning. And they had what's called a foul flight deck. And when a aircraft that's based on an aircraft carrier lands on an aircraft carrier, they have a tail hook right. that is on the aircraft yeah, yeah. and it catches on to one of four catapult wires that's across the flight deck. Well, if any time those catapult wires are loose or damaged or if there's any debris that's on the flight deck, they call a foul flight deck. And so they called the aircraft to do what's called a wave off. Mm -hmm. And so John's aircraft got a wave off, five men were on board. And so everything was looking good. They said they were going to ascend and circle the, the aircraft carrier and come in for a safe second landing. But instead they flew straight into the water. No cry for help. Um, the Navy searched all night long. They never found the plane. They never found the cause of the mishap and they never found my husband or the rest of his crew. Okay, okay. So here you are with a baby yes. and a toddler. Yes. And you've just lost your husband. Yes. What's next? Yes. The tragedy, the, the heartache. Right. The absolute, this can't be happening. Right. Your mind must have been in a whirlwind. Oh, yes, yes. I can't imagine, what do you do next? Yeah, what do you do what next, do you do? right? What you know what I did? I started picking up Barbie dolls. Oh, wow. Off the floor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's something to get your mind off of. I knew that people were coming. Oh. Oh, yeah. My three-year-old had been playing with Barbie dolls. And my first thought, I mean, I know, of course, I cried and I was in shock. And I was, you know, once I got off the floor. Mm. And at the time, when they came to my door, they said they were still looking. But I knew that they didn't send men in stripes to family members were considered next of kin, obviously. They don't do that unless there really is no hope. Mm. Um, well, is it kind of like then uh, MIA, a missing in action uh, for yes. you? Mm -hmm. Because was there missing ever in closure action. with no. this? Mm -mm. No. No. Mm -mm. How have you dealt with that? Isn't that something? It, it, I know it's been 30 years, but still, yes. it's still there. Oh, of course. Yeah. yeah. So, But you, you dealt with it by knowing you had to get it together. Well, I had to get it together because I had these small children. Right. Yeah. And uh, John and I, we were believers, we were very active in our church. We sang in the choir, we taught Sunday school, we were in Bible study. We had a really strong faith and we had a commitment to each other. And it's, the book is actually a love story because I take the reader and also now the listener, because I have an audio book that came out last year. Oh, yeah. I recorded it That's myself. Good. So it's on any Audible or any of the audiobook platforms. Um, so it's this love story that John and I have between each other and we wrote letters to each other oh. every single day when he was deployed. Not a text, you know, not an email. This was in the early 90s. Right. It was a handwritten letter, handwritten yeah. letter. So I knew that uh, we had this beautiful marriage and I knew that he was in the presence of Jesus. Amen. And my little girl, Jordan, she was three and when I told her that daddy wasn't coming home anymore and that daddy died. Do you know what she asked me? She said, is my daddy happy? Oh. 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 The innocence of a child. Oh, yes. Lord yes. gave yes. that to me. It sort of yes. gives us awakening when we hear the words come out of a child's mouth, is my how daddy... we should be feeling. Exactly. Yes. Lord. She said, is my daddy coming home? And of course I said, no baby, I'm sorry daddy's not coming home. Oh, yes. And then she goes, my daddy happy. And I was able to say to her, yes, yes. your daddy's happy because he's with Jesus. He's, yes, yeah. amen. But there's still those dark days. Oh, and absolutely. I take the reader through that. I get really raw. I talk about grief. I talk about questioning of your faith. I talk about um, when God doesn't make sense. And about I- About being mad, were you mad? I didn't, I didn't know. I mean, I, I was angry that the good guys were lost at sea and the not so good guys <laughs> were still left on this earth yeah. and you yeah. can't help it but go there. Oh, yes, absolutely. Um, but I talk about wreckage 
um, because I got two pieces of wreckage that floated to the top of the ocean. That's all I got back. I got two pieces of wreckage oh. and a folded flag. Oh. Um, the, col the folded flag, of course, is significant of losing someone in the military. I'm a gold star wife, and a lot of people don't know what a gold star yeah, family I is. is. I yes. don't. And most people don't. Yeah. What when is that? a gold star, I'm a gold star wife, which means my husband uh, lost his life in the line of duty. Down, okay. So my daughters are gold star children. The gold star oh, family. Gold so star family, yes. yes. And it's interesting, I'm going to... Uh, diverged over here for just a second. That's one of the platforms that um, the book does. It's, it's creating awareness for Gold Star families. Mm -hmm. But you know when they say, 10% veteran discount. Yeah. <laughs> Wherever, what store you're at, Lowe's or yeah, wherever, 10% veteran discount. And yeah. I always say, I'm a Gold Star wife. Oh. Can I get that discount? Yeah. And normally they say, what's that? Yeah. yeah. Mm. And I pull out my card and say, this is my card. And sometimes they'll give it to me and sometimes they won't. Really? Mm -hmm. Even with your card? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's ridiculous. Just interesting. Yes. But, but a lot of people <laughs> don't know because there, there really hasn't been a book like mine out there because mine's a book of faith, but it's also a military book. And I talk about what it's like to be married to a naval officer, what it's like to be uh, a wife whose husband is gone for six months, and I, that's the one thing I do not know how you do how women do that. Yeah, and now men too. Yeah, men and, and women. women, and they yeah. have these children, the children at home. At and home. the children. And back then there was no communication. That's right. Yeah. All we had were letters. Yeah. Um, if there was an emergency, you had to send a Red Cross message. So I talk about that life, and I talk about um, I had a co co-author Julie Vudre. Mm wonderful co-author. She did all the research for the military for me. I had it vetted by many, many pilots, admirals, captains, commanders. Some of them had flown with John because I wanted to make sure that when we wrote the military scenes that they were accurate mm -hmm. and that any of the military community, anybody who would have read it, they'd say, yep, that's what it's like. Yep, they got that one right. Mm -hmm. So it took us about 18 months to write the book. And Were there a lot of tears? Oh, I had to get those letters out. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. I had yeah. saved all those letters all these yes. years. Now, I've remarried. I've remarried a pastor, mm. and we had two children together. He adopted my little girls, and we got oh, married. Wonderful. And so I, when I was writing the book, I would say to Joe, my husband now, I have to go upstairs, and I've got to open up the love letters that John and I wrote to Whoa. each other because I had to pull excerpts from them. Wow. And my co-author, Julie Vudre, is the one that told me, you know, she said, Chris, you're going to have to get the letters out. Mm. Oh, no. Mm. Yeah. Don't make me get <laughs> the letters out. Yeah. <laughs> well, Chris, let's back up just a little bit. Back to the time that you got the notification. Mm. Yes. I picked up that you were involved in church and John was involved yes. in church. Yes. And so did you have blood family near you at that time? No. Or did you lean on the church and the yes. church loved you? My church See, I community. think that is a big factor that people don't understand that we mm. need to love on everyone. My husband and I lived in yeah. Virginia Beach for four years. Did you? Okay. Near well, that time. We yes. were at First Baptist Norfolk. Okay. We were at Kempsville Baptist. I <laughs> Kempsville Baptist. <laughs> but we had a lot of military there Absolutely. and we were fortunate enough to have some in our Sunday school class yes. that we loved on and they loved on us because yes. you become a knit family in a church. Right. You have your church family. Yes. And right. I talk about that in the book yes. as too. The, it is the importance. so important. Yes. And I would like to speak on that, especially since COVID. Yes. Um, what happened is I believe that churchgoers got lazy, if you will. Yes. yes. Because they got used to watching services online, but they lost mm. community. That's mm -hmm. true. They've lost engagement. Mm. And I have found that without that Christian community, those brothers and sisters in Christ to come alongside you when you are going through a cancer diagnosis or the loss of a child yes. or maybe the loss of a marriage or, you know, fill in the blank, loss is loss. Right. And you know, everyone has wreckage that's right. in their life. Your wreckage isn't going to look like mine, but where are you going to find your hope? That's right. Um, the H in hope is you hold on to the truth, and that's mm. the truth that Jesus loves you. 
Is that where you started? Is that in the Word? In, Absolutely. The of the church? In the Word. I, you know, John and I had made a commitment to raise our children um, in fellowship with believers and to learn the Bible. So one of those things was to stay obedient, even though I didn't feel like it. Yes. Mm. You don't feel like it when no. you're going through heartache and grief, especially. Yes. But I knew that I had the responsibility of these two small children that were relying on me, and I knew that Jesus was our anchor. Amen. He was the father to the fatherless and the husband to the husbandless. Yes. And he yes. tells us he will never leave us or forsake Amen. us. And that Holy Spirit Amen. sort of dwells yes. so that when you, I've been so heartbroken at times, nothing compared to what you have experienced, mm -hmm. but you don't even know how to pray. You don't. Yeah, you don't. You have to have the Holy Absolutely. Spirit. You have to have the Holy Spirit in the pray Word. For you. The mm -hmm. Word is so important at yes. that time. <laughs> If you have it hidden in your heart right. and you can go back and, and bring that word up, what a comfort. That's why the Bible says to study the scriptures, you know, hide it in, in your oh. heart because it's like you said, we all have wreckage. Yes, we do. We all have those valleys that seem like we'll never get out of this. And that's really the purpose behind the book in my ministry. Mm -hmm. So I named uh, the book Providing Promise in honor of Operation Provide Promise. Oh, yes, fantastic. that's marvelous. But also God gives us his promises mm -hmm. that he's going to be our provider. Oh, I love it. The pro his promises are yes, yes and amen. Yes and amen. That's amen, right. Amen. I, and he said, I, I'm one that sticks closer than a brother, brother. because I've, I've been through some hard times, not as much as you, but I knew he was there. Yes. I knew his presence was with me and that with him, I can, I can make it. Aren't you glad you knew him at this time, that you and John yes. mm -hmm. had that relationship yes. with Jesus Christ and that you could forge ahead and right. help others. And help others, yes. which yes. is scriptural as well. Oh, awesome. And who yeah. knows who is watching this show today. Yes. That's right. That can mm -hmm. receive this message that there is hope. There is hope after heartache. After heartache, that's yes. right. Yeah, hold on to the truth. So the H-O-P-E is, and I spell this out in my book, and when I speak, it's hope. H, hold on to the truth. O, open your heart to others. Mm. P, position yourself for obedience. And an E is embrace the past, mm. but face the future. Amen. Because you don't know what the Lord's going to do That's in your right. life. Absolutely. It's going to carry you through what those purpose. valleys. Jeremiah 20 and Amen. 11 is my first, but we got to go to a break. Got to go to a break. Okay. Yes. <laughs> We're going to come right back more with Chris. Don't miss a minute of it. This is so marvelous, and you want to hear the rest of the story. Yes. Amen. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Wow, <laughs> I've been looking through Chris's book and honestly, uh, you're my hero. Oh. <laughs> I mean, seriously. I, I mean, there you are, a, a mother, uh, two young babies, and yeah. you're in the muck and the mire of it. Yeah. And it's, you're in this tragedy, but yet you know you have to go on. Take one For, step at a time. One step at, at, at a time. So you start out with the Word of God mm -hmm. and you rely on the Lord to bring you through. But how long, Chris, does it take mm, to get through that right. and to be at peace? Right, that's a good question. Uh, one of the healing powers that the Lord uses is music. Mm, and sometimes true. there were days that I couldn't read the Word, but I could listen to His music. And I began to heal through the power of music. And then I slowly started going to scripture. Mm -hmm. um, I stayed in the word at church, but you know that it has to be between him and you mm -hmm. personally. Right. It's not about being a member of a church. It's not about what religion you are Amen. to help you get through life's valleys because Amen. we're going to have them because we live in a fallen world. Amen. And sometimes people will say, Lord, why me? And they get angry and they turn their back on God because they blame him yeah. Yeah. for the calamities of life. Mm. Well, we live in a fallen world. That's right. And because we live in a fallen world, we have sin. Yeah. And because of sin, we have heartache, tragedy, disease death, yes. Yes. betrayal, abandonment. 
and it took me a while to get that. And then finally through uh, counseling, through being in the Word, through his music, through reading. I read the book, When God Doesn't Make Sense, by Dr. James Dobson. I love him. And his, his words, and I, I quote him in the book, his words were just enlightening to me to say, God didn't choose that plane to go down. Right. That it was an accident, it was a mishap. Did he allow it? Yes. Um, that's a question that we won't know until the other side right. of eternity. Yes. Mm -hmm. But wow, what are you going to do with your wreckage? How are you going to turn that wreckage for his glory and for his good? Um, mm -hmm. Part of it is you have to heal. And part of it, you have to take that one step at a time to find that closure. I didn't have a body. Yes. So that was very difficult because I kept thinking he was going to be found on an island. Yeah. <laughs> like Tom Hanks. You had that story. Yeah. And I met with Beth Moore when the book first came out and went down to Houston and uh, she prayed over me. But one of the questions that she asked me was, did you ever think he was going to come home? Mm -hmm. I said, of course. Yeah. yeah. Of course you think they're going to come home. Yeah. You know, that's a very t difficult emotion to deal with. Um, but slowly but surely, there's a part in the book where I came to that crisis of belief. It was maybe I was in my second year of grief, and I cried out to the Lord in the middle of the night holding John's Bible. And Ooh. I was in my cry room, which I call it was my cry room, which was yeah. my bathroom mm -hmm. that I would go into because I didn't want my children to hear me grieve. Yes, I understand. Because I knew it would scare them if they heard me crying for their mm -hmm. father. Well, I have mm -hmm. a question. How that's, are your children doing today? That, oh, today they're fabulous. I so wanted to ask you, did they ask, ever ask about it? Did well, they because ever talk of, about it? of course, yeah. yeah. We have talked about Daddy John for many, many years. I've been speaking, uh, giving my testimony for 28 years. Oh, Wonderful. Wow. But the book just came out because my oldest daughter asked me to write it for the 25th anniversary of the mishap. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. And see, I have a granddaughter, which is John, my late husband's granddaughter Daughter. biologically. Yes. So my daughter, Jordan, said, Mom, will you please finally write the book? You've been talking about it <laughs> <laughs> all these Had years. Have you ever written a book before? No. I, no. And I would sit down and try to write it. But yeah. it was too emotional. I couldn't yeah. do it. Yeah. But Did then, this help give closure to you? Yes. yes. The closure was See, beautiful. See, that's what she probably felt. That's that it would I, be. Yeah. I know mm -hmm. it was hard and that you still hung on to hope somewhere in there. Yes. Yeah. But this sort of sealed it. It was beautiful. And God blessed it. It was so beautiful to write this story. And Julie Voudray, my co-author, started out as my ghostwriter because I wasn't going to write. Said, I can speak, put me on a stage, yeah. I can tell the story, but put me and start writing about these details. That was me when I wrote mine. I'd just it's, cry. You just cry. Mm -hmm. My first time I sat down to write, because Julie said, you, need, you know you need to write. I'm like, no, kid, don't make me write. Yeah. Oh. You have to write because those readers need to hear it from you. From you, from your heart. So I closed my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> start typing. <laughs> well, I have one question. We, we're about to close, but oh. it's so wonderful. You're my letter from heaven. Yes. I wanted to know, we got about a minute. What is that? Yes, yes. That, my letter from heaven. Um, it was, I took the letters that John and I wrote to each other and Julie did, it was her idea and we changed it so that it would be Jesus's letter to me, his love letter to me. Mm. Oh my word. Because there's love letters in this book and it's John telling me how much he loves me throughout the whole book. And then what Julie did in her beautiful, creative, <laughs> God-inspired mind is she Perfect. took those letters and turn them into the love letter that Jesus had for me. Wonderful. That is so that beautiful. That is such a blessing. And, um, that's beautiful. There's a story in there that's called the balloon story. And it's actually where Jesus answered my cry for help. Wow. And I'd, I'm not going to tell you. I'm going to let you I want read it. <laughs> because we got to close. Yes. You yes. need to get this book. Yes. It's How can they reach you? How can they um, reach you? They can reach book? me, providingpromise.com or providingpromise.org. 
they can email me at Chris, and that's Chris with the K, at providingpromise.com. I am on Facebook, on Instagram as well, and we have a ministry now where uh, we speak, I travel, I do women's conferences, retreats, awesome. and I share my story, and I bring in guest speakers and interview people about hope. That's wonderful. 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 Thank you. Yes, I'll send you, you a copy of my book. We're going to go to break right now. Chris, thank you. God Bye bless back. you. Thank We're, you for having yeah, me. Yeah, I, I hope someday you can come back and I would love have to. another book. Yes. I would love to. Okay. Sure We're to get this book. book at it's providing a Widow's Journey to Hope. Going to break. Be right back. Wow. Thank you for being with us today oh, on Friends yes. and Neighbors. It has been awesome. Sherry oh, and I that. enjoy welcoming you. <laughs> Into our home. home. Yes, into your homes that we come on a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whenever you get it. We're so thrilled that you do, and we hope you continue it always, don't we? Yes, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Love you. Go.